Hi, it's Jan Beta, or what's left of me. I've had quite the day, and uh, what better way to make this day better than to repair something beautiful like this nice ZX Spectrum. It is the one I um, repaired and uh, refurbished to an, an extent in the video I'm going to link in here. Um, very uh, loved one, the first computer um, the father of a co-worker of mine um, had and I uh, got it as a donation and um, I promised to take good care of it and that's what I did. But I didn't do any uh, further restoration work so there are the old uh, probably a bit uh, out of spec caps in there and I'm also going to try to future-proof this to an extent, like I did with the Commodore 64. And I also did a similar thing with the um, VIC-20. Huh? So I'm going to do this uh, to the ZX Spectrum as well. I am going to replace the capacitors in here, the electrolytics. Um, I'm going to add heat sinks um, to at least the ULA. I am going to replace the voltage regulator that's in there that gets quite hot with a solution that doesn't get as hot and uh, should still work fine. So, okay, let's open this up and uh, get going. There's one screw missing. I think it was missing before. So here's the part where you want to be super careful because the keyboard is connected with these ribbon connectors that easily break. This is a new membrane so they don't break as easily as if this was a, a 30 years old membrane. Let's have a look. We have our ULA that gets terribly hot and we have our voltage regulator that I replaced I think with the with the new one, because I suspected the old one uh, would be a bit weak from age. Um, didn't replace any of the caps yet, that's what I'm going to do and I'm going to desolder this again and put in another solution that I'm going to show you. I did the composite mod on this thing, the easy, um, just connected a wire basically to the video signal and connected the video signal to the RCA jack that's already on there and disconnected the RF modulator that's in this can. And as I continue to mention, I really really like the, the ZX Spectrum. I'm not, uh, I didn't have one so it's not as nostalgic for me as the Commodore 64 or the Amiga or other computers um, that I've seen back in the day. I'm pretty new to the ZX Spectrum, so please forgive me if I, I um, talk rubbish, uh, basically. But it's, it's a lovely little machine, I love it. So this looks pretty clean because I cleaned it in the previous video. <laughs> uh, so the main problem with these is, of course, heat. Because they have a really, really tiny um, case. And... Uh, a lot of chips and uh, the voltage regulator and so and there's not a lot of um, airflow in there at all so what I'm going to do is to um, heat sink this and replace the little voltage regulator but first let me recap this and for this purpose for recapping I bought a whole lot of Vishai caps that are actual, like these ones, um, and have a, a similar color, at least they are blue too. It's quite a different blue, but um, it's going to to keep the, this uh, looking as it was from factory, or pretty close to what it was from factory. Yeah, let's go, let's recap this. Um, you saw me recapping stuff. Um, basically, it's just a matter of desoldering the old capacitors. I'm doing it one at a time, um, so I don't get the values confused. And I'm always always take care you get the right polarity with electrolytic caps. I think um, on some spectrum boards the polarities are um, the silk screen on the board tells you the wrong polarity. So I'm going to be extra careful about that. Don't know if it's the case with this issue two board. But, yeah, I'm going to be careful. 
uh, time to heat up the soldering iron. And um, I'm going to put on my anti-static wrist strap because we don't want to damage any ICs by electrostatical discharge. Somebody told me this is, uh, doesn't work and he's never seen chips damaged by electrostatical discharge. Uh, I have. I have at least damaged one SID chip from the Commodore 64, which is quite an expensive chip, and if you did this once, um, you are going to get one of these and uh, use it, basically, because you don't want to ruin more chips. So I highly recommend this. There's also anti-static um, mats and stuff like that. I don't have that yet. I plan on upgrading this sometime, I think. Um, uh, for now, I am using this to discharge myself. I'm going to start by removing the heatsink here so we can peek under there. I don't know if there's uh, additional capacitors under there. So the screw. So there's no no caps under there. Okay, let me show you the capacitors I have bought. Okay, I think here's the capacitors we need. Um, 100 microfarad, I think these are 100 microfarad. Yeah, there's one microfarad ones. These are one. These are 22. We need a lot of 22. I think most of them are 22 microfarad ones. Okay, uh, so soldering iron is heated up. I am going to do this the way I did with the other ZX Spectrum and that I am going to heat it from this side, I think. Um, to show you guys that it's possible to do this without a fancy desoldering station. I should at least be a bit prepared here. <laughs> so you can basically do this without much, just a soldering iron and a little pair of pliers. So let's see. Works pretty well. And the polarity is marked correctly. So, and these don't look too different. And they are good brand. Wish I is a, is a reasonably good brand. So, let's watch the polarity. So there's our first cap, and uh, yeah, basically the rest is history. We're going to do this for all the caps on here. <sighs> so fast forward, commence, recapping montage. Okay, I already kind of feel better. <laughs> Ah, that's good therapy. Okay, this is a little botch. There was at it um, some point. It's a mod to make up for um, some power supply issues these early boards had. So, yeah, they did a little 4.7 microfarad uh, one and connected it to this resistor, which is R58. So, from uh, C34, which we just replaced, so we're going to look for a 4.7 microfarad one and place one in there. And we're going with the Panasonic one, which is also a pretty good brand, so I don't know if that's really necessary, but I'm going to do it anyway. So, positive goes here. Okay, my botch looks better than the botch before, I think, so nothing's lost there. Okay, here's a thing. Um, capacitor 46 is... Uh, here's the little plus designator, but it actually is the other way around. And I checked, I uh, double-checked on the internet, and it's actually on issue 2 boards, the 
capacitor of 46 is um, the silk screen is wrong. So you have to, the plus is on this side actually. Oh dear. Okay, let's do it right. <laughs> so the plus is where the minus is, and it's here. So this is the minus, this is the plus. This is kind of confusing. <laughs> Oh, here's an interesting bit. Um, I got asked, or I read a lot about people um, wondering about this wrinkled um, backside of old uh, PCBs. Um, you see this a lot in Commodore 64s, especially the earlier revisions, and you also see this in ZX Spectrums. And what it is, is um, it's simply they did this as a cheap way to make the, the traces a bit um, bigger, thicker, so that they can um, transport more current. They added another layer of solder and um, in, the, in the solar bath where these were going through, so they added the solar mask afterwards. And uh, yeah, that's wrinkling underneath there because it's such a lot and it cools off and it wrinkles that's just physically for some reason what it does so that's why these old boards often look wrinkly it's nothing it's they came like this from factory basically okay one capacitor left <laughs> okay fully recapped i think it's time for a little um test this thing still powers on at all Okay, so I have my little power supply here. Uh, the ZX Spectrum legendarily doesn't have a power switch, so I'm just um, plugging in the connector here. And I think, yeah, still get a picture. We <laughs> get a nice um, dot crawl there. Okay, for replacing this 7805. I have these, which are basically um, drop-in replacement uh, switching power supplies for 5 volts. Um, these are pretty cheap, uh, made in China, and uh, I think I ordered them directly from there. I don't know if I can... Yeah, you can just snap them apart. And basically this should just replace this. Um, it should have the same pinout, and we should be able to desolder this and solder this in. And we won't even need a heatsink for this because it's a switching power supply and it's a, or it's a switching converter, um, DC to DC converter, which is much more efficient than these old um, voltage regulators and should output five volts as well. So yeah, let's try and put this in there and see what it does. Okay, I think I'm putting this in like so and bending this over so yeah, probably make good contact there. I hope this is going to work, I don't know. Let's test. Yeah, and we get a picture that looks a lot like the picture we had before, which is nice. We shouldn't have any problems whatsoever with heat now. Yeah, it gets a bit warm. So that seems to work a treat. I can't even see the monitor, can you? Okay. Okay, so that seems to work a treat. You can see the, the monitor better now. By the way, I'm using my new um, lighting 
rig here, which is a lot brighter than before. Um, I could afford this, thanks to my patrons. I'm gonna link in my Patreon page be here. So if you want these videos to look uh, more like this, um, on this in this area here, uh, can't see the monitor that good, um, please consider supporting me on Patreon because um, the money goes into my rig here and in things to show you on the bench here. So let's see how warm this gets. Okay, it's not even not even lukewarm. It's very, very, very reasonable. So I think should measure the voltage there. I guess nine volts, and this should be five volts. Okay, five point one one or thereabouts, which is fine. I guess. Okay, so we have um, resolved this problem the old voltage regulator which gets pretty hot, um, replacing it with the modern switch mode supply thingy here. hope it still fits in the case, we want to see about that. Um, now this thing here gets pretty hot. The RAM and stuff is pretty cool, but the ULA, which is the main uh, it's like it's kind of like the PLA in the Commodore 64, but more <laughs> does all the the main logic stuff, and um, it's also responsible for the sound and things like that. So it's a it's basically um, a way to implement a special chip and implement um, the glue logic in one chip, and this gets pretty odd because it's not very. It's not a very modern chip, and uh, yeah, these things got hot. So we're going to put a heatsink on there, but we only have a couple of millimeters to put it on there because there's not much clearance about that. So let's see which um, heat sinks fit. Okay, here's the the stuff I normally use on my Commodore 64s, which are these uh, thin uh, things. So we would have to put a row on there like this. Yeah, and I don't think it's going to fit. Let's see. No, it's absolutely. There's there is ways to do this um, with normal heat sinks. You could we could um, desolder the socket this um, ULA chip sits in to have more clearance, but then it wouldn't be socketed and these chips um, die pretty often so we probably maybe would have to desolder it again at some point. So what I'm going to do is to get a flat uh, sheet of uh, metal. I have a little copper plate somewhere that we're gonna put on there. Okay so here's the aforementioned copper plate that should fit in there, I guess. Let's see. Yeah. Barely fits, but it does, I think. We don't put it all the way down here. Yeah. And I think I'm going to cut a little, like so, out of this to. Yeah. To sit on on top of the ULA here. Should have taken aluminum. <laughs> Whoa! Okay, got a little copper plate, and I even cut the edges a bit with some sandpaper. So I think this is what we are going to end up with. See if it fits. Yes, I think it does. Yeah. Okay, so this is going to work and it's going to at least triple the um, surface area there, which isn't bad, I guess. So, to attach this, we have little thermal compound somewhere. 
So here's the stuff I was talking about. Silicone heatsink plaster. I got this from eBay. It's basically a Chinese product, uh, no name stuff, but I've seen this being used by other people, so I trust them. <laughs> and I'm going to use this. And I'm going to clean this a bit with alcohol before a good idea. And I'm going to clean my copper plate, which is probably full of copper splinters and dust. Sawdust. Copper sawdust. <laughs> Put some plaster on there. I don't know how much. I guess a little... something like this. Probably a bit much. Let's see. Okay, should put this on there. Depress it. Yeah, this looks quite reasonable, I guess. Should put it in the. Doesn't touch anything. So this is some something you can basically do to all old ICs that get warm. Put some, some to, to spread the heat around. You can put something on there. In this case, we are going with a metal plate. You can use um, these things, which have um, adhesive stuff on the back already. You can salvage um, heat sinks from other electronics and basically use whatever you can find. Definitely keeps a bit of stress away from these chips, which will probably let them live a bit longer. Hopefully. What else to say? Um, as with all these old computers, basically, um, always take care of the power supplies. The power supplies of the ZX Spectrum um, are legendarily failing too. Uh, like with the Commodore 64 ones, they are very cheaply built and not very high quality. And basically use a good 9 volt switching power supply. Um, you have to take care that with these um, connectors center negative in this case here. Um, the modern ones often have center positive connectors. Um, spectrum and some old electronics are center negative so take care of the um, right polarity there and you don't have to worry basically. And while I'm at it, a common problem with these um, ZX Spectrums is that the edge connector here um, gets too crusty to um, allow making good contact with peripherals like the S, uh, Diff MMC Future here. Um, and in this case, you can use an eraser to clean them, which works pretty nicely. It's the best way cleaning the residue from cartridges and uh, other peripherals off there, basically. Works a treat. And I think if you buy a Diff MMC Future these days, you get a little rainbow colored eraser with them. <laughs> Which is pretty nice. I don't have one, so I'm using this bland white one, but apparently it also works. I don't know if you can see it, but the the residue on there just vanishes. And also our heatsink plaster seems to have dried to an extent so that we can put this back into a case. I'm going to put some alcohol on there to wash the residue. Uh, the eraser <laughs> residue away. But otherwise this is our finished product I guess. So let's put it in the case and test it thoroughly. Ta-da! Okay, for testing purposes I have connected my trusty Tech 2 that I recently got and my Diff MMC Future. Yeah, and as you can see it still works. 
Now we should be able to press this button and get into the menu. Okay, let's run our test tape, test RAM tape thing. This should be your diagnostics. Run and soak test, yes. Okay, it seems our tests have passed. It's just a RAM test. Uh, but it also should test if the ULA is working correctly and stuff like that because otherwise the test wouldn't run at all. So let's see. There's a version of Mr. Helly. I just I just found that out. Let's see how that looks on the ZX Spectrum. One of my uh, favorite games on the Commodore 64 I guess. It's terribly hard to play but um, it's very nicely made. Yes, that's that seems to be Mr. Alley on the man. That's Mr. Alley on the on the specky. Okay, let's see how it looks. Get ready. Can I play with the joystick? Space. Yeah, I can play with the joystick. Oh, nice! This is actually. <laughs> This is pretty close to the Commodore 64 version, except it has far less colors, of course. And the scrolling is a bit, a bit messy. Not as smooth, let's put it that way. Of course, obviously. Because the Spectrum doesn't have hardware scrolling. Okay, so here's me uh, playing Mr. Halley on the Spectrum we just uh, future-proofed, so to say. Um, that's it for this video, I guess. Thank you guys so much for watching and thanks for your comments. I'm really sorry I'm not... Yeah, I'm really behind on answering your comments. I try to do so. I'm behind on answering your emails. I mean, there's so much personal stuff going on I don't want to talk about at this point um, that... I don't manage to do much. Um, I managed to do this video, so this is something. And I want to thank you for your continuing support. If you want to give me some support, check out my Patreon page, check out um, my other videos, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel if you like retro computer repairs, and yeah, stay in touch. I hope to get back to you soon. There's a lot of messages I haven't answered, I know that. Uh, hopefully I'll manage to do soon. So, um, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again on this channel. I'm Jan Beta. See you next time. Bye.